Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic equation. We have x cubed equals 3x squared minus 6x plus 4, and we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to use the cubic formula. Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. And then we're going to go ahead and get rid of the x, x squared, the quadratic term. Okay. And to be able to do that, we basically need to use substitution, replace x with something like y plus 1. Now, how do we get that? Like, how do we know it's y plus 1? So there is actually kind of a way to find it. You can replace x with y plus k. And then when you plug this in, you basically want the quadratic term to disappear. So you can set the coefficient of y squared equal to 0. And that will give you the k, uh, value of k. So there's only one value of k for which this is possible. But as a shortcut, I can safely tell you basically that you take the coefficient of x squared right here and you negate it which is going to give you positive 3 and then you divide it by the highest power which is the degree so in this case you're going to get 3 divided by 3 which is 1 and then you just add it to another variable and that becomes your x makes sense so let's see that uh, how, how this works uh, in practice let's replace x with y plus 1 Now we're going to go ahead and expand it. If you go ahead and distribute to negative 3, all right, let's see. Now 3y squared cancels out. These two terms cancel out. We end up with y cubed plus 3y. Let's go ahead and combine the constants. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 6 is 4. 4 minus 4 is equal to 0. Wow. This gave us a real simple equation, didn't it? Okay, let's see how this works. So some, most of the time you're going to have a constant which you can put on the right hand side and then you can just use the cubic formula. But I didn't know that it was going to give us something nice. This equation is very easy to solve because we can go ahead and factor out a y. This is basically called a depressed cubic. I was calling it reduced, but this is actually called a depressed cubic. And it doesn't even have a constant, so it's very depressed. Okay, now, so to solve this equation, we're going to basically set each factor equal to 0. So one of the solutions is y equals 0. And the other one is going to come from y squared plus 3 is equal to 0. But that doesn't have real solutions because y squared equals negative 3 doesn't have any real solutions. But this gives us y equals plus minus square root of 3i. So we have to use a complex number or an imaginary number for this one. But this is just the dummy variable y. So let's go ahead and turn it into x. These are the y values. And what's the relationship between x and y? x is equal to y plus 1. So from here we can basically say that hey x is equal to y plus 1 which is 1 or x is equal to y plus 1 which is 1 plus minus root 3i. So those are going to be the x values that we get by using the cubic formula. Okay? Great. Uh, so what would happen if we had a constant? Let's, we can also talk about it. So the cubic formula basically works like this. Remember the binomial theorem, we can go ahead and cube this. This gives us a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. And I can kind of organize these terms in a nicer way, such as we can go ahead and put these two together and write it like a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab all multiplied by a plus b. That's equal to a plus b cubed. And then we can go ahead and subtract this piece from both sides that gives us a plus b quantity cubed minus 3ab times a plus b equals a cubed plus b cubed. So now, 
when you go ahead and set this equal to a function or another variable like y, you get y here and here. And then if these constants are called something else, like for example, this is obviously a constant, right? In this case, while well, given the equation, this is going to turn out to be a constant. And uh, let's call this, uh, I don't know, maybe something like m, and let's call this n. We're going to get something like y cubed plus my equals n, all right? Or minus n equals 0. So this is our depressed cubic, and we just basically solve this or set it equal to this. So this gives us a system, a cubed plus b cubed equals n, and a, b equals, from here we get negative m over 3. By replacing, you know, b with something or the other way around, we get a quadratic system. By solving that, we find the values of a and b, and then y is just equal to a plus b. All right? That's how the cubic formula basically works. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, and we'll finish with that. So, and... I should also be able to show you a graph at the end. I think I made one. So the second method works as follows. Let's go ahead and rewrite our equation. So there's something special about this equation, and you may not notice, you may not have noticed this right away. That's perfectly fine. But when you write a problem like this, of course, you're kind of thinking backwards, uh, and you don't, you don't necessarily see where this comes from. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put everything on the same side again. But this time, I kind of recognize the coefficients. If you are familiar with the binomial theorem or in cubic expressions a little bit, you hopefully recognize that the coefficients, if, if I had something like this, you know, something like this, it would be nice. Why? Because this would give me x plus 2 cubed from binomial theorem. I don't have those, but I have half of those coefficients. So what does that tell you? That tells you to double everything. But when you double, x cubed is also doubled, but that's fine. We'll see how that goes. Okay, ready? Multiply everything by 2. I mean, not 8x, that's a 12. Minus 8 is equal to 0. Now, separate x cubed. Put that aside. And... What do you get? You get a perfect cube plus another cube. In other words, sum of two cubes. Make sense? And that's equal to zero. Awesome. This is x minus two cubed. That's x cubed. Their sum is zero. And obviously, this is factorable. Remember the formula for a cubed plus b cubed. It's a plus b times a squared minus a b plus b squared. If you use that, you're going to get x plus x minus two multiply by that's the a plus b factor, and then x squared minus x times x minus 2 plus x minus 2 squared equals 0. From here, you're going to get 2x minus 2, which is 2 times x minus 1, and this should give you, x squared cancels out, but you get another x squared from here, minus 4x plus 2x, minus 4x plus 2x, that's going to be a minus 2x, and then you get a plus 4 from here, right? And then this should give you the same solutions, x equals 1, x equals plus minus root 3i. And if you multiply the product x sub 1 and x sub 2 here, you're going to see that the product is actually equal to 4. All right? Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, and we'll finish with that. All right. Here's the graph of these two functions. x cubed is, as you know, it's kind of like a, you know, a curvy uh, function, whatever, something that looks like this. And then x 3x squared minus 6x plus 4 is a parabola and they intersect at a single point, obviously the um, cubic function is going to grow faster, so there's no way they're going to intersect again. And the only intersection point is going to be at comma 1, comma 1, which means x equals 1 is the only real solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.